Hello, and here we are for the very last part, part three, of our review for the chapter seven quiz in geometry. This part is on geometric mean problems in triangles, and we're going to start just reviewing what exactly is a geometric mean. We talked about how an arithmetic or arithmetic mean of two numbers, for instance, six and eight, always we learn to be the average. Add them together and divide by two. So the average of six and eight would have been, of course, seven. But the geometric mean is a whole different thing. It's that number in the middle in a geometric series if you're multiplying by something every time to get from six to eight. So we learned what the means and the extremes are, excuse me, in a proportion. So the geometric mean is going to be that one number, here we'll call it x, that'll go across the means in a proportion so that the extremes are 6 and 8 and will therefore set up an equal proportion of two ratios. This number, x and x, across the mean is the geometric mean, and it'll always be the same number, same letter there. So if we solve this proportion, 6 times 8, we'll get x squared is 48. And if we square root both sides, we want, we would normally take the positive and the negative square root of 48, but in geometry we're just going to worry about the positive, and for a geometric mean you just want the positive because you're looking for a number that ha if you multiply by a common factor going from 6 to 8, so of course it has to be positive. So the square root of 48 is our geometric mean. We would want to simplify that. 48 is 4 times 12. It's 2 times 2 times 12 is 4 times 3, or 2 times 2 times 3. Pull out our pairs, and we get 2 times 2. The 3, of course, stays inside, which is 4 root 3. So the geometric mean of 6 and 8 is 4 root 3. Now we talked about there is a shortcut way. What we really did once we cross multiplied is we took the square root of the product of the two numbers. So the shortcut would have been the geometric mean would be the square root of the product of 6 and 8. So you can do that, do it that way and save a little time. And of course you'd get the square root of 48 again, which is 4 root 3. Now, in geometry problems, we discussed how geometric means come across in geometry problems when we have problems like this with a right triangle. Now this only works in right triangles, that's very important. A big right triangle with an altitude inside it. Now all three of these triangles, see the three triangles? One right triangle there, one right triangle there, and the big right triangle are all similar by angle-angle similarity. They all have a right angle, and then they all have one other common angle. So they have to be similar triangles. We derive these geometric mean problems by comparing how these proportional sides would end up if you wrote them as three separate triangles. We ended up with two formulas, what we call a leg problem and an altitude problem. And the way you decide to use a leg or an altitude problem all depends on what you're looking for. So on a leg problem, the leg is going to be the geometric mean. So you can use either leg 1 or leg 2, whichever one you want, or whichever one you need. Here we'll say leg 1. And that's the geometric mean. Again, this is going to be the same number across the means. It is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse and the whole hypotenuse. We're talking about the big hypotenuse on the big right triangle. Yes, it's true that all these are hypotenuse as well, but when we talk about the hypotenuse in the formula, we're talking about the large hypotenuse. And on the denominator over here goes the segment that's closest to the leg we're talking about. So if we're using leg one, we're going to use segment one. If we use leg two as the geometric mean, the segment closest is segment two. So we're always using this whole hypotenuse 
which is the sum of the segments if we're not given the whole hypotenuse. So take that leg you want to use, write it twice. Hype, leg, leg, seg is how we say it to remember it. For an altitude problem, which is usually the easiest, I always start out with these if I can. Find the altitude and write it twice. This might be your x. This might be a number. But the altitude here has to be the same number or letter going across the means. That's the geometric mean between the two little segments on the hypotenuse, segment 1 and segment 2. Very easy to solve. The altitude is the geometric mean between the two little segments. It divides on the, hyp on the hypotenuse. So, looking at this figure, don't forget we can always use Pythagorean theorem if we have two of the three sides of a right triangle. So sometimes we see a problem that looks like it's going to be a geometric mean problem, but all we really needed to do was do Pythagorean theorem. So when I look at number one, I see my x is an altitude, my y is the leg. So I'm probably going to do a leg problem and an altitude problem. I, again, always start with an altitude problem if I can because I think it's easier. So we're going to use this formula. Find the altitude and write it twice. The altitude is x. And the two little segments that the altitude divides from the hypotenuse are 2 and 4. So we cross multiply. x squared equals 8. Square root both sides. x is the square root of 8. And we simplify. Square root of 8 is the same thing as 2 root 2. Great. Okay, so now for y. Now, notice, now that we know x is 2 root 2, we do have two of the three sides of a right triangle, so we could totally use Pythagorean theorem. 4 squared plus 2 root 2 squared equals y squared and solve it that way. We're going to get the same answer either way, but just for the fun of it, let's do the leg problem to see if we can get y that way. So the leg problem says find the leg and write it twice. The leg is y. So we'll write it twice along the geometric mean, along the means. And um, according to the formula, the leg is going to be the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse. So now what is the whole hypotenuse on this figure? If we look up here, it was made up of both segments. So we're given 2, we're given 4. The whole hypotenuse is 6, 2 plus 4. Make sure you add these together. Do not multiply them. And the third, the last part right here is the segment. Now, which segment do we use, 2 or 4? Always use the segment that's closest to the leg we're using. So in this case, it would be 4. If we're looking for this leg, we would have used the 2. Cross multiply. y squared equals 24. y is the square root of 24. 24 is 4 times 6, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So we pull out that pair of 2's, and we have 2 root 6 as our answer. Awesome. Now, give number 2 a try. Pause the video, try number 2, and see if you can find x and y. And then come back, and we'll do it together. When you look at number 2, you're given you're actually given the altitude as 2. Now don't assume that this number always has to be your variable. It can be a number that you're given. So we can do an altitude problem first. Always try to if you can and put the 2 along that geometric mean, those means. If we try to do a leg problem first, well the problem there, the segment closest is x and the hypotenuse has an x in it, so we'll have an x and the y in the same problem. So we have to use the altitude problem first. So find the altitude, write it twice. 2, 2. Our two segments go on the numerator and the denominator of the proportion are 5 and x. So again, no, this doesn't have to be x here. It can be the same number. So we get 5x equals 4. So our x comes out to be 4 fifths. 
Okay, so there's x. So again, if we have x, we now have two of the three sides of a right triangle. So we can use Pythagorean theorem here. 2 squared plus 4 fifths squared equals y squared. Don't really love that because I have it to deal with a fraction, but we could totally do it. But for the fun of it, let's do the leg problem instead. So y is the leg. Find it. Write it twice. Oh, horrors. 5 and 4 fifths is the whole hypotenuse. We're going to have to add those together. 5 and 4 fifths, if we change it to an improper fact fraction, would be 25 plus 4, so 29 fifths. Don't be afraid of these fractions inside your proportions. And the segment that's closest to the leg is the 4 fifths, so that goes down here. So we cross multiply and we get y squared equals 29 times 4 fifths. Now what is 29 times 4 fifths? A bit of a mess. 29 times 4 is 116. And then we have 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, and then we're going to square root both sides. So we have the square root of 116 over 25. Hmm, now surely that will simplify. We know the square root of 25 is just 5. How about the square root of 116? Well, let me come up here just a second, and let's simplify 116. 116 is obviously divisible by 4. 4 will go into 116, so we'll end up with 2 times 2 times 29. So we're going to pull out our 2's, so we get 2 root 29 over 5. Kind of funny looking fraction there, but that is the crazy answer. Did you get it? Okay, last one. This one's particularly ugly, about as ugly as they get. We have to find an X, a Y, a Z, and a W in this geometric mean problem. So, hmm, where should we start? Always good to start with an altitude problem, but I notice my altitude is W, and the two segments that the altitude divides are X and 8. Can't do that. I'll have a W and an X in the same problem. Well, if I try to do a leg problem with Z, that's going to be a problem too. The whole hypotenuse is y, and the segment closest to z is 8, so I'll have a z and a y. Can't do that problem. Okay, well how about a leg problem with 3? I think that one's going to work. Let's give that a try and see. Okay, so the leg problem with 3, the leg, find it and write it twice, is 3 and 3. The whole hypotenuse is y, and the segment closest is x. I know I have to use x as the segment closest, but do I have to use y as the hypotenuse? Well, the other way to write the hypotenuse is the sum of the two segments. Make sure you add them. Do not multiply them. So here we'll put x plus 8 instead of y um, because now we can solve this proportion. Now here when we cross multiply, we're going to get x squared plus 8 x, make sure you distribute that x to both terms there, equals 3 times 3, or 9. So, looks like this is going to be a factoring or quadratic formula problem, one or the other. So we've got to get everything on one side and set it equal to 0. So we're going to bring that 9 over. I think this one can be factored. We need two numbers that multiply to be negative 9 and add to be positive 8. Well, I would say that would work with a 9 and a negative 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. We use the ZPP, the zero product property. If two numbers multiply to be 0, one of them or both of them equals 0. So we get x plus 9 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and this answer will give us negative 9, and this answer will give us 1. Hmm, two answers. 
Well, sometimes we can get two answers on these problems. There might be two possible triangles that would work, but can x be negative 9? No, I don't think so. Not in a triangle if this is a length. So we're going to chunk that answer and just keep the positive. Our x is 1. So now that we know x is 1, we surely know y is 8 plus 1 is 9. So look for those quick tricks if you can use them. So now again, we have two sides of a right triangle, the 1 and the 3. We could use Pythagorean theorem here to find the w if we wanted to, or we can do an altitude problem for w. I, of course, want to do the altitude problem right now. So the altitude is w. Find that altitude. Write it twice. The altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments it divides, 1 and 8. Cross multiply, w squared equals 8. Square root both sides, w equals the square root of 8, which is 2 root 2. Just for the fun of it, let's see if we would have gotten the same thing with the Pythagorean theorem. If we had done x squared, or 1 squared, plus w squared equals hypotenuse squared, we would have had 1 plus w squared equals 9. Subtract 1, w squared equals 8, and yes, we're going to get the square root of 8, or 2 root 2. Either way, same answer. So just pick which way you want to do it. Okay, so we have that this is 2 root 2, so now we still need the z. So again, we could use Pythagorean theorem on the big right triangle. z squared plus 3 squared equals 9 squared. That doesn't look too bad. We could do a leg problem with z. The whole hypotenuse is 9. The segment closest is 8. That doesn't look too bad either. So either way you want to, let's do the leg problem just for practice. Find the leg. Write it twice. Z is the leg. The whole hypotenuse is 9. The segment closest to the leg is 8. Cross multiply. Z squared equals 8 times 9. And I like to kind of simplify this as I go along. I already know 8 is 2 root 2 when it's um, when it's square rooted and simplified. So if we think of this in factors, before we even bother to multiply it out, 8 is 4, 2 times 2 times 2, 9 is 3 times 3, so that gives us a pair of 2's to pull out, a pair of 3's to pull out, which gives us a 6 on the outside and a root 2 left on the inside. Sure, we would have done, gotten the same thing had we done the Pythagorean theorem. So that's our x, our z, and our y, and w, all for that triangle. Great job. I hope you feel well reviewed for your quiz.